When one door close, does it mean all opportunities are done? When one door close, most of the time we tend to think that it's over. There's no other opportunity. Things are not going to change. We sometimes feel very sad at a closed door. We wish we could go back and fix things, maybe. We ask ourselves multiple questions saying, what could I have done to make this different? What could I have done to make this a different situation? You know, we tend to blame ourselves very often when the door closes, feeling very sad, very sorry for ourselves sometimes, regretting and thinking, reminiscing about what could have been done differently. But sometimes we forget that when a door closes, it certainly means another one is somewhere else. Maybe if you walk down the corridor with a big heart of faith, you probably find another door open. And maybe you should have stopped banging on a door that's been closed for a long time. Very interestingly, fellas, we know the story of Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso. These are three countries that have been put to the side by other African nations. Yes, other African nations have decided to put them to the side, meaning not communicate with them because they're not singing the same song, because they're not dancing on the same foot with them. Niger, Burkina Faso, and Mali have decided to take direction of the country, to take leadership, to regain their freedom by giving back the power to the people and not working forever for the colonizers. Now, let me just tell you a quick story. When Mali started his revolution, when Malians stood up against French nationals, French soldiers in their country, when they kicked them out, they were faced with a very strong reaction from other African nations. Yes, other African nations closed their doors to Mali. As you can see on the map, Mali is a country that is in the heart of Africa. It's in the continent. They have no ports, meaning for a country like that, in order to get substantial help or get uh, cooperation, importation, exportation, they need to cooperate with a country that has a port. And for the cooperation to happen, you have to be in good terms with whoever you want to cooperate with. So a country such as Mali, Burkina Faso, or Niger, these countries need other African countries to access the sea so they can sell our product, so they can import product in the country for the people. Now imagine everybody stand against you. All the people that are at the port of Africa are against you. They don't want you to import. What's going to happen to your people? Starvation and many other difficulties. This is exactly the case of what's happening with these three countries that are fighting very hard for a true freedom. However, like I said earlier, when the door closes, it doesn't necessarily mean there's no other opportunity. Yes, it has happened. The king of Morocco, yes, the king of Morocco, has set down a proposal asking these countries to come toward him, meaning to work and cooperate together so he can give them access to the sea. Congratulations. And this again comes back to what I say most often. Your brother is not necessarily somebody that looks exactly like you. Absolutely not. Your brother is not the person you share skin tone with. It's a lie because if you look very carefully, us and us sometimes, very often indeed, we do each other very wrong. And it's very sad. Just look at the case of Africans right now. All these other countries standing against three African brothers who are fighting for freedom. They're trying to protect the interests of the West instead of fighting with their brothers for their general freedom. But obviously, this is motivated by money and greed. Now, look at who's coming to their help. The king of Morocco. Yes, Moroccans are Africans. But many people tend to look at them different because the skin tone is a little bit different. Yes, many people tend to look at them different because they speak Arabic. So they tend to push them toward Arab nations. Now, how do you justify this when a brother, supposedly a brother, somebody that looks just like you, closes his door to you, to your people, cuts electricity off of your country, putting people in danger in hospital, people in coma, people that need help, babies in situation that is crucial, disregarding all these lives just to protect the interest of the West. And in the meantime, somebody from Morocco says, you know what, my doors are open. Let me build infrastructure so I can give you access to the sea. What lesson do we learn from this? A massive one. So, top diplomats of Morocco, Burkina Faso, Chad and Mali, and Niger agreed to boost cooperation at a ministerial coordination meeting held in southern Moroccan city of Marrakesh on Saturday.
The meeting focused on an initiative proposed by Moroccan King Mohammed VI earlier in November, who suggested to launch an international initiative to enable the Sahel countries to have access to the Atlantic Ocean. How powerful is that? The king stressed that the success of such initiative hinges on upgrading infrastructure in the Sahel country and seeking to connect its transport and communication network existing in the region. So the king is willing to use his means, to use his tools to enable these countries to bring their stuff and send them to the port, send them to the sea, export. Because other African nations, as you can look at the map, look at the map. On the southern part are all these African nations that are furious against these three countries. They're not happy that they live trying to flee themselves. All member states of ECOWAS present here today have all committed elements. They have committed their own equipment. They have uh, committed their own resources to undertake this mission. So I tell you, we are ready to go anytime the order is given. The D-Day is also decided which we are not going to disclose. They don't like it, so they've closed the port. They've closed access to them. They've put them to the side, they've secluded them. They are called the ECOWAS countries. Yes, they look just like them. Very similar faces, very similar everything. But Morocco has opened its door. Morocco to the north or northwest opened its door to Mali, Burkina Faso and Chad. And these leaders are very grateful. Listen to them. L'initiative de, de Sa Majesté le Roi du Maroc a suscité l'intérêt du gouvernement du Mali qui y voit une manifestation de la solidarité de la fra et de la fraternité agissante du Royaume du Maroc à l'endroit de pays frères africains. On donne l'espoir que cette initiative royale offrira des réelles opportunités d'exploitation et de transformation, de commercialisation de nos ressources l'accélération de la connectivité régionale et des flux commerciaux pour la prospérité partagée du Maroc et des pays du Sahel. Cette initiative est une alternative qui s'articule parfaitement à l'ambition des États du Sahel de valoriser leurs énormes potentialités en minimisant le poids de l'enclavement à travers une politique d'intégration infrastructurelle efficace et porteuse de croissance. C'est vous dire que nous saluons à sa juste valeur l'offre faite par Sa Majesté le Roi Mohamed VI et pour laquelle, avec les autres pays frères du Sahel et sous les éclairages de nos plus hautes autorités, nous travaillerons à son appropriation. Ça, c'est des facilitations vraiment qualifiées de fraternelles, je dirais de, de sauvetage. Et également, il pourrait faire vraiment l'objet d'un développement futur durable. The diplomats expressed their gratitude to Morocco's offer to make its road, port, railway infrastructure available to the Sahel countries to strengthen their participation in international trade. So, meanwhile, other Africans are blocking the door to other Africans. Uh, Morocco, that's Africa too, but I know you, you tend to look at them funny because they look a little bit different. Uh, I've opened the door, yes, to the people that are supposed to be your brothers. That's why I don't like people calling me brother. Oh, brother, brother, brother. Don't tell them I'm not your brother, okay? I'm going to be your brother when you show so you me brotherhood. Don't tell, call me, I'm, don't call me brother just because I, no, 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 I'm sorry. I don't play that game. Because there's too much hypocrisy beyond brother. Brother, brother, brother. Act like my brother, then you're my brother. Don't just call me brother for free. I'm not interested in that. Okay? Your brother is not somebody that looks just like you. Absolutely not. Your brother is a person whose heart looks like yours. That's your brother. Somebody ready to sacrifice things in the name of love for you. Morocco has done some tremendous things. L'initiative royale et la promesse que le Maroc apporte toute son énergie, mobilise tous ses efforts et partage tout son savoir-faire. Il s'agit de soutenir les partenaires du Sahel pour libérer les, éno les énormes potentialités de la région et ainsi accélérer la croissance et le développement durable et inclusif des économies de la région. Okay, they went to Mali. Okay, Moroccan king <laughs> exhorted his people to go to Mali and build an hospital. 
Morocco is another country. Mali is a different country. They went to Mali to build an hospital. On 7th July 2022, the king of Morocco inaugurated Mohammed VI prenatal clinic in Bamako. Bamako is the capital of Mali. In the effort to reduce high-risk pregnancy and limit maternal and infant mortality by providing infant and premature babies access to prenatal and postnatal services. So he's invested his own money, Morocco's money, to build an hospital in Mali. Okay, for babies and infants. The gynecology facility is set to provide numerous services, including intensive care and resuscitation for mothers, neonatal resuscitation, neonatology, while adhering to the latest international standard. So to the highest international standard, they've built an hospital in the name of love of Africans in a neighboring country. That is what I call brotherhood, fellas. Not your nonsense, my brother, my brother, while you're stabbing each other on the back. We're not interested in that. We want brotherhood of contribution. Brotherhood, we can put money together and lift one of us up. That's brotherhood. Brotherhood of coming together to build something for one of us. That's brotherhood. We're not interested in the brotherhood of gossiping, talking about toxic people, toxic women. That is absolute nonsense. It's not, it's not good enough for us. It's not our level. That's stupid level of conversation. Okay? Brotherhood is only in action. It's only in actions. It's not in words. You can only be my brother when you show me like that you, when you act like a brother, not when you talk like I'm your no, no, absolutely not. Morocco has done some very, very good things. And we praise them for that. Let's thank them for that. I think it's very necessary. Again, Morocco went through some very difficult time. Um, just a few months back, they had a terrible air earthquake. Terrible earthquake. Taking the of many people, I'm not gonna use the word. Many people were down. Houses destroyed, infrastructure touched. And the king did not ask for help coming from other countries. He didn't go beg for help, for mercy, for Europeans to send him help. Okay? Even the French was frustrated. The French, Macron, president of France, was very frustrated because Morocco did not ask for help. And they have a history because they came to colonize Morocco. And the French president dared to say, well, Morocco knows what we can offer. If Morocco need help, Morocco need to ask us for help. Nous avons mobilisé l'ensemble des équipes techniques de sécurité pour pouvoir intervenir quand les autorités du Maroc le jugeront utile. I just lost many, many people on an earthquake, terrible earthquake. And what you want to say is if I want help, I need to ask you for help. Well, if you really want to help me, then I shouldn't be asking you for help. I'm sure you can see that I need help. Why don't you just come and help? Why do you want me to beg you for help? Guess what? The king of Morocco did not ask for help. He said he doesn't need help from nobody, especially not those countries. Okay? And what he did was amazing. He provided funding, money for numerous people to rebuild their houses. Absolutely unseen. And a tremendous lesson. I hope African presidents learn from this guy. Okay? And again, he's still doing great things. Morocco announced on Monday that almost a million disadvantaged families will receive direct monthly assistance for the first time on Thursday, a system unheard of in the kingdom for many years. So they're going to be receiving money if you, you, you are going through a tough situation. The, the kingdom will give you money. Unheard of. This is Africa, fellas. In all, nearly million families are expected to benefit. These targeted families allowance are part of the vast social reform initiated by King Mohammed VI in 2020. Beneficiary will receive at least 51,500 uh, dirham. I'm not sure how much that is. It's amazing, fellas. I mean, the lesson is very clear. Morocco has opened its door while other Africans have closed their door, closed the ports to fellow African countries. Morocco has opened the door to Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso. You can now export yourself through Morocco to go to the sea. No more begging for these other small countries. You're acting funny. No more knocking at the door, expecting them to be nice to you. You got Morocco. Morocco said we're going to build infrastructure. We're going to come with a game plan so we can update, upgrade our countries and have great cooperation. Thank you very much. Let me know how you feel about this, fellas. Always a good pleasure. Is your brother necessarily somebody that looks like you? Mm, somebody that speaks your language, has your accent and your lingo. Or is your brother somebody that's actually there when you need them? Somebody that defends you when everybody turns their back to you. God bless.